If you follow the links in the paper to the SVP wiki, these terms are either defined or shown how they're used. And so anyone who takes the time can follow the links and get a pretty good grasp on what Russell was talking about. Well, the key element in his dynamo generator is where do you get the energy? And once you get it, how do you regenerate it so you always have a power source to drive this device? <clears throat> so the whole key is what is this power regeneration and how does it work and can we do all that with it? And according to what we're able to understand from it and from Keeley's work especially, um, yeah, you, you can you attract this, this energy, you accumulate it into a volume, and then you compound that by making it a smaller volume, which is more compact. The denser the material that you start with, the more energy you get to work with. And that's done through the process of uh, harmonization of the quantum entities that we're dealing with. In this case, light. That's why it's an optic device, a light device that concentrates light, but not physical photonic light. It's the light of the Akashic or scalar forces or whatever you want to call it, the luminiferous ether, for lack of another term. It, they're all quantum entities and they all have energy, and you can accumulate these according to the harmonization brought to bear on them. Think in terms of quantum entanglement and uh, boson pairs, for instance, or compounds of boson pairs. That's what you wind up with. And it's a high energetic state. Well, if you want to cause an attraction between two distant bodies, whether it's this distance or 10 miles, they need to be harmonized, which is to say they're brought into the same unison. So they vibrate at the same pitch, the same period. And depending on how far you want to go with that process, you would also tune for the secondary and tertiary harmonics or overtones in each of those bodies. Keeley one time made the comment that tuning forks, the best tuning fork you could buy, was only in tune by one fortieth, which meant if you wanted to be truly in tune, you would tune for the harmonics and overtones, like a piano player does, piano tuner does. You know, they'll listen for the higher overtones and they'll, they'll tune those in and out as they go up the keyboard. So we could do the same thing with uh, quantum entities and they would collapse together. They would self-mutually attract and collapse and concentrate. At some point in this process, the uh, feedback resonance would start to build within these particles. In other words, the amplitude just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because everybody's marching to the same amplitude, so to speak, like soldiers on a bridge. Mm -hmm. Those tones will build uh, such an amplitude that they will start breaking down into secondary and tertiary harmonics. And those secondary and tertiary harmonics creates the discord, which is the beginning of the transformation of that which you brought together. And as that pro progresses, the progression of these discords, then you build, then the process becomes one of dispersion. Lots of pressure being released, lots of expansion going on until the amplitudes drop off again, go back to zero over a period of time, where you're back to the zero inertial plane, as Russell called it. And the regeneration process is when that concentrated energy is caused to disperse. So we concentrate it, then disperse it. And then we concentrate it again. So there's your regeneration. So it's a cycle. Rhythmic balanced interchange. And an analogy. Let me give you an analogy. Um, modern science is based on using heat as an energy source. So we'll take a chunk of wood, for instance, and we'll burn it. And burning actually means disassociating the molecular material, the wood, into atomic and plasma material, which is what flame is. Of course, you got the heat and the light coming out of it too. So first the tree had to concentrate the elements from the earth and the elements from the air, light, water, etc., gases, <coughs> and it brought it into a compact form, which is wood. 
And uh, depending on the tree, you know, pine trees don't have much energy in it because it's not a very dense wood. But an oak tree is very dense, has a lot more heat than pine wood does. So we have options and flexibility as to how we want to concentrate those similar elements into a chunk of wood, so to speak, an artificial construct. And then we release it by disassociating those molecular structures, just like you're burning a chunk of wood. The document part two goes into a lot of the process of how to do that, but the general description of that process is in this paper.